Hey y'all, let's take a look at the distributive property. The distributive property just means you take something uh, outside of parentheses and you just multiply it one at a time to everything inside the parentheses. Now, before, uh, again, you, you can look at these and you go, God, look at all that's so intimidating and the parentheses and the fractions and the negative exponency and the variables and the, all that kind of stuff. This is the same thing as multiplying fractions, right? You know how to multiply fractions, I'm assuming, right? Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, you know, simplify if you can, you're done. Go to the next one. That's what we're going to do. So go ahead and pause this and copy, and let's do this together. And we'll do this one first. We'll go here to here. All right? So let's just do numerator times the numerator. That's going to be 4, a squared, and then b to the negative 2. All right, denominators is going to be b and then a to the fourth. All right, and we're done. Now let's go ahead and take this and distribute it to that one. So I got a minus there. 4 times 3 is 12. a squared times a to the first is a to the third. And then you're going to slap that b on the end of there. There we go. Then b times a squared is just ba squared. Okay, now we're going to simplify, which means we're going to kind of, you know, mash all these things together. Let's go ahead and just put everything in the numerator. Make it a little simpler there. Okay, so I'll take this and go, okay, I'm going to get my 4. I'm going to get my a squared. I'm just going to bring up the a to the 4th up top and turn it into an a to the negative 4th. And I'm going to take, I'm going to keep my b to the negative 2 here. And I'm going to take this b to the 1 power and bring it up there and turn it into b to the negative 1. And I'll deal with that in a second. Subtract 12 and then a to the third, and then my b. I'll just go ahead and put b to the one. And then I'm going to move this b to the one power up here, and it turns into b to the negative one. Okay, and I'll move the a squared up there, and it turns into a to the negative two. Well, let's take care of this one first, all right? I got my four. a to the second times a to the negative fourth is two minus four, so a to the negative two. And then my b is b to the negative two, Minus 1, we leave the negative 3. Okay, done. And then my 12, then I have an a to the 3rd times an a to the negative 2. That gives me a to the 1. You don't have to write 1, but I'll write it anyway. b to the 1 power times b to the negative 1 power is b to the 0 power. Now, b to the 0 power, by definition, is 1. And by the way, we didn't even have to do this. A b divided by a b, anything divided by itself, is 1. So we didn't have to do that. Okay, and that is your answer. Now, again, in the back of the book, they might have it to where they have, you know, different placement of some of these variables. If they have it where the a squared is down in the denominator and it's going to be a to the positive 2, well, you know that's correct, right? You just, they, they've just moved it down there. That's all. Okay. All right. Pause and copy this one. Okay. Well, let's take a look here. We're going to, you know, we're going to take care of this one first. And this is just like multiplying 3 eighths times 5 sevenths. You just do the numerators. You know what? Get rid of that b to the 0. b to the 0 is 1. It's pointless to multiply things by 1. Let's just get rid of it, okay? Let's take care of a to the negative third times a to the second. That's going to be a to the negative 1. And then that's what? b and c. You slap that on the end there, okay? And on the bottom, c times c squared is c to the first times c to the second, which is c to the third. Done. Minus. And then let's say 3 times an assumed 1 is going to be 3. And then a to the negative third times a to the negative second is a to the negative fifth. And c times b to the negative 2, well, that's going to be c and b to the negative 2. There we go. Okay. Well, this time, let's just try uh, making everything into a positive exponent, just for the heck of it, right? Well, here's c to the first power. I'm going to move that down here. It's going to turn into c to the negative 1 power. That's gone. All right? I'm going to move this down here, and that will turn into a to the positive 1 power. All right? So the b just stays in the numerator. The a is down here, and c to the third times c to the negative 1 is c to the positive 2. And there we go. The second one, and I don't like that a to the negative fifth up there this time. I'm going to move it down here. Well, the c is good the way it is. The a to the negative fifth, I'll make that a to the positive fifth. I'm going to move that b to the negative two upstairs. 
and that turns into b to the positive 2. So there we go. That's all she wrote. Now again, don't, you know, if in the back of the book they have a to the negative 1 on top or c to the negative 2 on top, that's fine, whatever, you know, just look and make sure that if you moved your answer down and the exponent changed to the other sign, that it looked exactly the same. So there you go. Okay, let's uh, take a look at solving equations. And you've done this before, but let's kind of get a running start. So pause and copy if you need to. And uh, I just want to make sure that you take time to make sure that your negative, um, you know, your negatives are good and everything is correctly copied down. Because I hate making the mistakes up here, and then I've done like ten different things and I, you know, realize I made a mistake. Anyway, let's take our twelve, and the opposite sign is going to apply to everything inside this parentheses. So negative two x minus 5 is what we get, and I got a negative 2, and then a plus, and then that's going to be x minus 3. Okay, well let's clop this stuff together. 12 minus 5 is 7, minus 2x, and that's going to equal, I got negative 2 and minus 3, that's going to give me negative 5, and then a plus x. And I always hate x's on the right side, so I'm just going to take uh, the x and subtract it there, and of course I subtract it there as well. And I got a 7, and I got minus 3x, and that gives me a minus 5. And then I'll subtract 7, and subtract 7, yoink! Negative 3x equals negative 5 minus 7, and I'll divide by negative 3. And how many negative 3s go into negative 12? And the answer is 4 of them do. Okay, all right. Does that feel familiar? Okay, I hope so. All right. Well, look at this solution of the equation. Pause it and copy. Blah. Man, look at this thing. Actually, it's not that big of a deal. You're just going to multiply and distribute. If you want to think of that 3 as a 3 over 1, that might help you to do that a little bit better. But let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and do this part first. We're distributing the 3. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 over 6 since both of those are divisible by 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, we'll write 5 halves. Okay, let's distribute that 3 across there. Minus, and of course 3 over 1 times one over, uh, oh, times 3 over 5 is going to be 9 over 5x. And that's going to equal, good, good gravy, the opposite of everything in here. So that's what? Negative 1 half, and then minus x. Okay? Well, let's get this thing out of here first. I'm going to minus 5 halves. Well, minus 5 halves. Yoink. And that's gone. I got negative 9 fifths times x equals a negative a half minus 5 halves is negative 6 halves, right? Well, you know, negative 6 halves, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. All right, and then minus x. Now, I don't like that x there. It annoys me. Okay, so that's going to be a 1x. So since this is a 5 as a denominator, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a 5 just in one step. So I got what I have already is negative 5 fifths x or negative 1, right? So I'm going to add 5 fifths x. So over here I'll add 5 fifths x. And negative 9 fifths plus 5 fifths is negative 4 fifths x, and that equals negative 3. Okay, well the last thing we need to do, you know, anytime you have some kind of a, you know, fractional coefficient of x, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so negative 5 fourths. So negative 3 over, we'll call it over 1, times negative 5 fourths. Well, that knocks that out, I just give myself an x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is 15. 1 times 4 is 4, and there we go. There's my answer. Good enough. Okay. All right, just some old stuff of equations and everything. Hey, here's a hard one. Gee, there's a hard one. Let's do that one first. x minus 2 equals 7. Toughy, huh? Oh, the whole point is to get x by itself, right? So we add 2 here, we add 2 here. 7 plus 2. 72. No, that's not. Okay. Well, once you know that, the idea, whatever, you know, the idea of solving for x is that you mash everything else 
on the other side and make sure you have just a one, a positive one X. Everything else is on the other side and you've solved for X. Well, if that works for that, then it works for this kind of stuff too. When they say solve for P and then they have some equation with a bunch of variables in it, which you can, you know, pause this and copy if you want to. Well, to solve for P means we are going to get everything else on the other side and just get P by itself. The way to get rid of negative 3x is to add 3x. And the way to get rid of 4 is to subtract 4. Of course, this is an equation, so you do exactly the same thing to both sides. Okay, so your new equation looks like this. P is now by itself, which is what they want you to solve for. We start off with 7y. We add 3x and we subtract 4. Now, what is the value numerically of P? I don't know. No idea. That depends on what Y is and what X is. But we've solved for P. That's, we have it all by itself. One positive 1P, one and that's this, and that is all you need to do on these. Just get it by itself and isolate it. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Solve for Y. Go ahead and pause and uh, copy this down. And the same kind of thing, right? I mean, you want to get this, this needs to go. We want Y by itself. So this to go, you add 2X and you subtract 5. And of course, that's what you do on this side as well. All right, so we have 3Y is by itself now. And that's going to equal 2X minus 5. Of course, the 0 does nothing for the right side. All right, there's only one last step. What is it? To solve for Y. Divide by 3, right? Okay. This by the way, is fine as an answer. You can leave it like that. Just be aware that in the back of your book, they might have an answer where they apply the three to both parts of the numerator of this equation. So, uh, excuse me, of this fraction. So you might have the three applied to the two X. So you might see this looking like this. Two thirds X, that might be your first. And then minus five thirds. They might have this as an answer. Y is equal to this. And they might have it that way. If so, and if you have yours looking like the top one, just fine. Make sure they match pretty well and then go on to the next problem. Okay. All right. Try A. Go ahead and pause it and try A, and we'll come together in a couple of minutes and see what we get. And make sure, be really careful with those addition and everything like that. Um, let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and make all the exponents positive, all positive exponents. So move her up or down when you're finished distributing to make all the exponents positive. Okay. All right. Pause it. Okay, well, let's take care of this one first. I got 2 times 2 is 4. I got a to the negative 4th times a to the 1 is going to be a to the negative 3rd. b to the 0 to that, excuse my language. I'm going to get, uh, let's see, I've got b squared and then a c. Okay, that's the top. Now I have c times x squared. Holy smoke, we got four variables here. Okay, okay, now I'm done. All right, the second one, I got 2 times a 1, which gives me a 2. I got a to the negative 4th times a to the negative 2, which is a to the negative 6th, and then c times b to the negative 4th. Okay. And let me change these off so the exponents are um, positive. All right, well, look at this. c divided by c, that goes away. The 4 is okay, of course, where it is. The x squared is okay where it is. The b squared is okay where it is. The only thing that needs to move is this needs to move down here, and that turns into a to the positive 3. And again, this is just a matter of preference. There's nothing wrong with leaving it the way it is as an answer. Okay. All right. Unless the 2 is good the way it is, the c is good the way it is, the a is bad the way it is. So I'm going to bring it down here and turn it into a to the 6th power. The b to the negative 4 is perfectly fine the way it is if you want to be wrong and bring shame on your family for generations to come. But if you want this to be a positive exponent, that goes up to the top. That's a b to the fourth power, which again, just a matter of preference. And there you go. And that's what she looks like right there with positive exponents. There you go. You might prefer everything in the numerator. Fine. Doesn't matter. Whatever you like better. Okay. Pause it and try b. See what you get. All right, let's go ahead and make this into a fraction here. Two 
times 1 is 2, 1 times 8 is 8, so 2 over 8, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that immediately to 1 fourth, minus, okay, well then on this one, we're multiplying by this, the 2's cancel, so I have a negative 3x, Yoink. and there we go. That equals, and then it, the negative applies to everything in here. So the opposite of negative 4th x is positive 4th x, and the opposite of 2 is the opposite of 2. Okay, let me go ahead and make another color here so you can kind of see this a little better. Um, okay, so let's get rid of this negative, uh, excuse me, this 1 fourth by subtracting it. Okay, so I'm subtracting there. So I just have a negative 3x on the left side. I've got a 1 fourth x here. I'm going to go ahead and say negative 2. I'll go ahead and call that negative 8 over 4. So negative 8 fourths minus 1 fourth is negative 9 fourths. All right, and I'm going to need to subtract 1 fourth x here to get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call this not negative 3x, but I'll call it negative 12 over 4x. So scribble, scribble, scribble. All right, and I'll subtract a fourth x from that too. Yoink. Negative 12 fourths minus 1 fourth is negative 13 fourths x. That equals negative 9 fourths. Okay. And our last step we need to do is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal here, both sides. So that's going to be what? Negative 4 over 13 and times negative 4 over 13. And of course, the whole point of this is to make this into a positive 1x. So that goes away. I got a negative times a negative. And look, I can cancel too. The 4s cancel. And then negative times a negative is a positive. So x is equal to 9 times 1 over 13. There we go. Or 0 0.69207. No, no, no. 6.92307 in case you care about such things, and you probably shouldn't anyway. Okay. All right. Good enough. You guys have a great day. Be careful with your calculations uh, and uh, negative signs and all that mess. So have a great day. See you next time.